All right, we'll get started with Dodgers manager Dave Roberts. We have mics on both sides of the room, so just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Hi, Barry. We'll start with Kirsten down here in the front. Uh, Dave, I know you've talked about how this past week you've seen a different type of intensity from your players. When you look at and when you say that, what really stood out to you just whether performance-wise from the guys this week or preparation-wise? I think, yeah, it's a great question. I, I think um, I've just seen, I, I guess it's part of being in playoff mode for the last month and um, narrowing our focus, playing 27 outs, you know, being mindful of bases and how we go about each night. It, it's raised our level of play. And, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about other ball clubs and, you know, you sort of layer that in with uh, how it's been the last couple of years for us. I think that there's uh, some, uh, some intensity, some uh, want to, uh, you know, pay some people back and, and show how good we are. And I, I like that. I like that feeling in the, that, that's resonating in our clubhouse. Freddie Freeman, how is he doing today? How did he come out of the sim game yesterday? I know he was just taking at bats, but just what kind of step forward was that for him? It was a good step forward. Um, he's working down below um, on some with some arms down there. He took some live at bats. Uh, he'll go through his full workout today. So um, I I'm hopeful that, I mean, I'm expecting him to be in the lineup. Uh, what that looks like, I, I guess we'll know when we, when we see him out there, but um, with Freddie, um, I don't doubt that he'll be ready to go. We'll go to Fabian, stand it up on the right. Yeah, Dave, with Freddie, do you need to see him run the bases, play first base to sort of feel comfortable starting him out there game one? Um, he's going to do that today. Um, I think it'll be helpful. I think it'll be helpful for him, too. Um, I, I think for him, um, just making sure it's a net positive today as far as how he feels and comes at it today is most important and then get to tomorrow. So I, I just really don't think that there's any decision that's going to be made today or needs to be. And so tomorrow, as, as we get into the day and kind of see where he's at. But again, I'm still optimistic. And with John Motor, you guys have pointed a lot to that Yankee Stadium start, sort of like a sort of milestone for him to be able to handle this kind of moment. What do you remember about that night? And what do you think he sort of maybe gained confidence-wise from being able to have that kind of night? I, I think that was probably, you know, once he got his feet under him, I think that was, and, and I think I point to that because that at that point in time, I think the Yankees were probably playing the best out of anyone in baseball, and uh, to go to that ballpark, which is certainly a storied stadium, or even the new one, but um, it was just kind of an opportunity for him to kind of, for, and for us to see how he was going to respond on that stage, and um, I, I thought he threw his best baseball game of the year, and um, He's still seasoned as far as pitching in big ball games, so I'm really confident in the talent. I think the heartbeat's going to be fine um, in his first playoff game. Go to Kevin, stand it up on the left side. Hey Dave, uh, you're kind of uniquely qualified to talk about the progress of the Padres, even from the time they got good, because it's you that they see every time they get to the playoffs. The growth from, say, that 2020 series in Texas. I, I think with San Diego, um, yeah, I've, I've seen it. Um, I, I think. There's uh, the core, um, Manny, um, Cronenworth, um, obviously, uh, you know, Musgrove, who's, who's hurt now. But I, I just think that um, uh, there's a confidence. Um, Tatis, obviously, um, they've won some big ball games. They've always known they're talented, and they finally learned how to win. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. I was there when they weren't so good and when they were good. And so it's obviously, it's, it's a talented, it's a fun group to watch. Um, it's going to be a fun series. Yeah. I did want to ask you about Joe. He, obviously, you've seen him recently and you've seen him a lot. And I just, when you hear devastating news like that about a good pitcher and a guy that you know, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's, it's a bummer. Um, Joe is not only a good pitcher, he's a great guy, um, fantastic guy. And um, you never want to see that to anyone. Um, it's unfortunate, it's rampant in our game. And um, so to be at the one yard line and as far as in this series and for him to not be a part of it, it, it sucks. And uh, I feel for him. Go to the second row on the right. Hey Dave, uh, recent history, even though you just played 156 games, uh, you just played the Padres last week. 
what did you learn, if anything, from your team um, out of that series? And is there anything that you guys can draw from winning that series? Um, I, I really didn't. I, I mean, I, I think there's a few series that you can point back to that you know we got to you got to bow your neck. You got to find a way to win a baseball game, win a series. But that was one of them. And uh, I, I just know that there's toughness, and um, I, I just think that for me is. It was obviously a big series. Um, we won a series at home, but uh, this is a team that's coming out of a postseason series that we've got to, you know, get it in gear from the outset. And uh, in a short series, things happen quickly, and so we've got to be ready again from the outset. And if we can do that, um, I really like where we're going to be at. Let's go to Jack in the third row. <coughs> the just, just to clarify with Freddie, when you talked about being confident in the lineup, is that the, the starting lineup at first base, or is it just kind of being available for you guys? Starting lineup. Starting lineup. I expect him to be our first baseman. And, and if he's not, like, do you think there's still a chance he could be available in a pinch hit role? Yes, yes. If he's not, which I really don't even want to let my mind go there, it would be certainly on the roster, you know, Munch would be at first base, Kiki would be at third, something like that. And then with Yamamoto and Flaherty, um, did something change the last couple of days to lead to that flip, or is that just kind of looking at the schedule of the series and, and what made the most sense for your guys' pitching plan? Looking at the, uh, the schedule, the series, opponent, um, kind of thinking about the potential of game five and having both available, just kind of giving you optionality to kind of see um, how things play out. Go to David on the right side, third row. Uh, Dave, justifiably, the first three guys in your lineup have been talked about a lot, but they're not the only ones. And uh, I specifically wanted to ask about Teoscar. Um, he made a name for himself in the All-Star game, but can you talk about what he's brought to this club this year? Uh, man, Teoscar is uh, what he's brought. What has he brought? I, I think certainly uh, his availability um, has been next level. I think he's played in every game but a few, and you know, one was the passing of his father. So, uh, or grandfather, and um, the consistency of mind. He's a pro. Um, he's not afraid to fail, which I love. Um, he's played in big ball games. Wants to be in the spot. Can get a big hit. Um, he's just very consistent of mind each day, which is very refreshing for me. But um, everything I heard about him, uh, he's exceeded that. You know, seeing him on on, the, on a daily basis. And just one more thing. Is there any update on Miguel? Uh, I think Miggy Rowe is just going to be status quo in the sense that uh, he's better than he was uh, a week ago. And I think where he's at is where he's got, where he has been all year long. So it's not 100%. It's something he's going to have to deal with. And uh, he's not about to miss this uh, series. Let's go to Alden in front, and then we'll go to Barry. Hey Dave, um, Brandon Gomes said recently, um, and I hope I'm characterizing this the right way, but that rather than basically playing sim games every day during your bye week leading up to the DS, it's going to be more of a progression to intensity going into the series. How did you guys arrive at that decision and why do you think that might be the better way? Yeah, you know, I, it's true um, and, and I don't know the right answer. Um, I, I guess it's more of with five days off it starts to get a little monotonous um, when you're trying to have sim games every day to quote unquote keep guys sharp. Um, and so if you give guys you know, a day off and then an optional to have them potentially wanting to come back for more um, and three days is plenty of kind of ramp up and build up, you're gonna get plenty of at bats. Um, pitchers, you only have so many pitchers to use that can throw. So I think that that was sort of the, the mindset. Um, again, you know, you can do different things, but I think in our world we all understand that if, it, if you win, it's the right decision. So I, I don't know. Our players feel good about it. Um, I, I feel good about the headspace, the, the willing, the eagerness to play in this series. So that, that, so we'll see. Barry. Hey, Doug. Hi, Barry. Um, so a lot has been made about Shoei playing his first MLB playoff game. But this guy, he won a, a, Jap, a Japan title pitching in Tokyo. He, he struck out Trout to win the World Baseball Classic, one of the greatest moments in international baseball history. I mean, it, th this is not going to be 
as much of a big deal as it might be for somebody else. But what does he add to you, the fact that you have him in the lineup this year and you haven't had him the past few? Um, what does he add? Uh, a crazy talented uh, ball player. Um, I mean, he's, he's the most talented hitter on the field. Um, he can change the game in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, even if he were to get on base by way of walk, he can steal a base. Um, he can score from first. He can hit a homer. Uh, he's shown the ability uh, in this last month to use the whole field to get a hit if he needs to. He can drive in runs. Um, so that's what, you, that's what we're getting. I agree with you in the sense that he's played in a lot of big ball games. And um, I think it's more for us as fans uh, to see the that it's, it's something that's new to him to see how it plays out. But if there's any person I feel that's going to be able to handle this, it's certainly Shohei. Um, but yeah, I think he just brings a, a next level megastar to our ball club. So really in everything I and you just described, this is a guy who rises to the occasion and you don't expect him to do anything else. I don't. I, I don't. I, I really don't. I, I think that he understands the talent behind him. Uh, he can't do it all on his own. Um, he's just got to continue to take good at bats and play the game to win. And if he does that, then it's up to all of us. Claudia. Hi, Dave. Um, these games are obviously very competitive with a division rival. It's uh, the vibe of your clubhouse right now, including yourself, on unfinished business. Absolutely. I, I like that. Um, I think unfinished business is something that uh, resonates with our guys. Um, like I said, I talk about it, but we got to go out there and be about it, um, talk about the edge, the fight. and uh, But I really do feel that's the mindset that we're coming into. Um, it's, a, it's an edgy group right now, which I think is a good thing. Anything else for Dave? All right, Dave, thanks for coming in. We'll see thanks you tomorrow. Guys. Yep.